One of the most captivating what-if scenarios in fictional astrophysics involves the sun getting devoured by a black hole. Now, the chances of a random black hole strolling into our solar system are pretty slim, and that's a relief. But what if, unbeknownst to us, it's already here, stealthily residing in the core of the sun, nibbling away from the inside? Once upon a time, a handful of scientists, including the legendary Stephen Hawking, entertained the idea that there might be a black hole at the heart of our sun. In a 1971 paper, Hawking suggested that we wouldn't even detect a black hole with a mass of up to 10 to the power of 14 kilogram lurking within the sun. Sounds improbable, considering black holes are supposed to be at least 20 trillion times larger or a few times more massive than our sun. However, Hawking also threw into the mix the intriguing notion of primordial black holes, those much smaller celestial entities possibly formed in the early universe, an idea we've explored before. Welcome to Spaceverse, your cosmic gateway to the wonders of the universe. On this captivating YouTube channel, we delve into the realms of astrophysics, astronomy, and the mysteries of space. In our latest exploration, we discuss the intriguing possibility of black holes hidden within stars, contemplating the existence of Hawking stars, and their potential as detectors of primordial black hole dark matter. Join us on this cosmic journey as we decipher the secrets of the cosmos, presenting cutting-edge research and mind-bending theories that expand our understanding of the vastness that lies beyond. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and embark with Spaceverse on a voyage through the enigmatic and awe-inspiring wonders of the universe. So what if one of these cosmic wanderers found its way into the sun? Today, we're delving into the possibility that our sun, or any star for that matter, might be cradling a captured primordial black hole. We'll explore the potential impact on the star, how we could sleuth out its presence, and the surprising link to understanding the enigma of dark matter. Get ready for a cosmic adventure. First things first, let's delve into why Stephen Hawking's casual musing sparked the interest of many astrophysicists. The allure lay in the fact that a black hole nestled in the core of the sun could potentially resolve a perplexing puzzle about our star's behavior. By the mid-20th century, our understanding of the fusion reactions powering the sun was quite robust. According to our models, under the known temperatures and pressures in the sun's core, hydrogen should seamlessly convert into helium at a rate that precisely generates the required energy to sustain the sun. These fusion reactions were also expected to unleash an astronomical number of neutrinos into space. Confirming that the sun was emitting the anticipated quantity of neutrinos was crucial for cementing our understanding of the sun's inner workings. The first neutrino detectors made their debut in the mid-60s, but the observed number of neutrinos fell significantly short. Only about a third of the expected count. This conundrum became known as the solar neutrino problem. One proposed solution was that the sun's energy wasn't solely produced through fusion. Perhaps some radiation originated from a source that didn't produce neutrinos. Then, a few years later, along came Hawking's notion of black holes residing within stars, bringing with it the prospect of a new potential power source for the sun. Now, one might assume that a black hole would drain energy from a star rather than contribute to it. But that's not the case. Black holes, in fact, stand at the cores of the most efficient engines in the entire universe. While anything crossing a black hole's event horizon is lost forever, Matter approaching the black hole can attain speeds close to the speed of light, resulting in intense friction between infalling streams and correspondingly extreme temperatures. As a result, a feeding black hole radiates brightly. Take quasars, for instance, powered by immensely massive black holes in a feeding frenzy. They rank among the brightest objects in the universe. In the scenario of a black hole at the heart of the sun, some matter would be consumed but a substantial amount would be expelled outward as radiation. This would mean that the sun wouldn't have to undergo as much hydrogen fusion to meet its energy output, subsequently reducing the production of neutrinos. It's a fascinating concept, except we later unraveled the true cause of the solar neutrino problem. As it turns out, the sun is indeed generating the predicted number of neutrinos. We just weren't detecting all of them. Neutrinos oscillate among their three different types, and our detectors were only attuned to one of those types. With neutrinos properly taken into account, the need for the black hole engine faded away. All right, it does sound like a positive turn of events. However, there's still the lingering concern that if primordial black holes or PBHs do exist, they could potentially find their way into stars without our knowledge. 
In the decades following Hawking's groundbreaking paper, we've encountered more and more reasons to believe that primordial black holes might indeed be a reality. Before we dive into the intricacies of black holes within stars, let's quickly touch upon these motivating factors. First and foremost is a challenge akin to the solar neutrino problem. But this one remains unsolved. Dark matter. The majority of the universe's mass is composed of something entirely invisible. While the prevailing notion is that dark matter consists of some yet-to-be-discovered particle, there's also the intriguing possibility that it comprises numerous primordial black holes. This isn't a novel concept, and efforts to understand dark matter have led us to eliminate many mass ranges where these PBH could potentially contribute. However, a mass window still exists, PBH with masses ranging from 10 to the power of 14 to 10 to the power of 20 kg, akin to a medium to large asteroid, remain plausible candidates for dark matter. If PBH indeed constitute dark matter, their existence would need to be so widespread that it's plausible for some to end up within stars. Another motivating factor is gravitational waves. We've now witnessed hundreds of black hole mergers, identified by the subtle ripples in the fabric of space-time generated during the final moments of their in-spiral. While these mergers are likely the result of black holes formed in the demise of massive stars, there are some puzzling inconsistencies with the characteristics of black holes anticipated from stellar deaths. This has led to speculation that some of these mergers might involve primordial black holes instead. Alright, so we have some admittedly somewhat speculative reasons to consider the existence of numerous primordial black holes. However, the potential consequences of one finding its way into the sun are undeniably intriguing. So let's delve into it. Interestingly, two papers recently surfaced on the archive, and they do the heavy lifting for us. Both are authored by the same team, led by Earl Billinger at Yale and the Max Planck Institute, with the second paper spearheaded by Matt Kaplan at Illinois State. Full disclosure. Matt collaborated on crafting this episode, probably the most exciting parts. He's been a valuable contributor to our team on various subjects in the past, and I wanted to give a big shout out to him and his team for their fantastic idea. Both papers present cutting-edge simulations of sun-like stars that incorporate the presence of primordial black holes during their formation. These simulations trace the star's evolution through distinctive life phases until they eventually succumb to their black holes. The team refers to these stars that harbor black holes as Hawking stars, a nod to the individual who initiated this captivating line of reasoning. The evolution of stars devoid of black holes has been comprehensively understood for many decades. It typically involves the collapse of a giant cloud of gas under its own gravity until the core achieves sufficient pressure and temperature to initiate the fusion of hydrogen into helium. This marks the birth of the star, and its core maintains a relatively consistent fusion process for billions of years. Once the fuel for fusion is depleted, the star undergoes a sequence of transformative stages. For a star like our Sun, this entails expanding into a red giant, entering a helium fusing phase, and eventually dispersing its outer layers in an energetic display leaving behind a white dwarf as its exposed core. Now let's introduce a black hole into this celestial narrative. The discussed papers simulate the scenario where a primordial black hole, with a mass of a medium-sized asteroid, is present in the gas cloud, leading the star to form around it. This concept also applies to a star that captures a black hole after its initial formation. Despite its minuscule size, equivalent to that of an atom and limited gravitational reach, a black hole of this mass has no discernible impact on the formation and early life of the star. It steadily descends to the center of the star and initiates a slow feeding process. The energy generated by the intensely heated infalling material radiates outward, influencing a small pocket at the core, approximately 1% of the star's radius, roughly the size of Earth. Within this confined region, the typically sedate material of the core undergoes a tumultuous transformation. It becomes convective. This agitated sphere expands as the black hole increases in size, eventually engulfing the entire star. However, this process takes a considerable amount of time. One might assume that the continuous influx of matter would cause the black hole to rapidly grow, but the reality is quite different. The energy emitted from the vicinity of the black hole exerts a counter force against new infalling material, significantly curbing the black hole's growth rate. Moreover, the minute size of the black hole serves as a bottleneck. There's a limit to how rapidly you can funnel matter into an atom-sized black hole. 
The initial rate is approximately 100 tons per second, which may sound substantial, but in the grand scheme, it's essentially negligible. To put it in perspective, the sun loses nearly a million tons per second to the solar wind. As the black hole accumulates mass, its gravitational pull intensifies, and so does its size. The bottleneck widens, facilitating a more fluid inflow of matter. Simultaneously, it emits more energy, imposing some constraint on its escalating appetite. However, the rate of star consumption inevitably accelerates. Concurrently, the rate of fusion reactions within the remainder of the core remains relatively stable. This implies that the energy contributed by the black hole becomes a progressively larger fraction of the star's overall energy production. The transformation of a once-atom-sized black hole over several billion years, growing to about 10 centimeters in diameter and attaining a mass comparable to that of Uranus. A pivotal moment occurs when the energy output from infalling matter aligns with the output from fusion in the rest of the core. This marks a critical juncture where the Hawking star's hidden secret becomes evident. The surplus energy disrupts the balance between gravity and outward energy flow, causing the outer layers of the star to swell, simulating an early entry into the giant phase by billions of years. Unlike a conventional giant phase, where the core remains compact, a Hawking star sees even the core expanding, leading to a drastic drop in core density and the cessation of fusion. Operating solely on the power generated by the black hole, the star, engulfed in a sphere of churning plasma, initially resembles a typical dying star. While our sun is expected to expand significantly, becoming 100 times larger and 1,000 times brighter, a Hawking star halts its expansion before reaching such colossal proportions. The initial expansion phase paradoxically makes it more challenging for the central black hole to sustain its feeding, imposing limitations on the growth of both the black hole and the enveloping star. The Hawking star attains a maximum size roughly four to five times the current size of the sun, emitting light about 10 times more brightly. It can endure for up to 10 billion years resembling a relatively uncommon stellar type known as a sub subgiant or a red straggler, before the black hole ultimately completes the consumption of the star. The potential advantages of the sun hosting a concealed central black hole, highlighting that, despite its shorter duration as a conventional-looking star dominated by fusion, the subsequent expansion wouldn't pose a threat to engulf Earth, unlike the regular red giant phase. While heat-related challenges might persist, the narrative encourages finding silver linings in this scenario. Transitioning from speculation to a more grounded examination, the discussion delves into the criteria for identifying potential black holes within the sun and the feasibility of detecting Hawking stars. In essence, if a black hole resides in the sun, it must be less massive than the transition point, smaller than Uranus or roughly one ten-thousandth the mass of the sun. The exploration also contemplates the possibility of a smaller covert black hole, emphasizing that it would need to be substantially less massive than Uranus to align with the Sun's behavior dominated by fusion. Recent findings on neutrinos aligning with fusion expectations are discussed, with a consideration for potential non-fusion sources contributing up to 1 by 1,000 of the Sun's energy. The research team concludes that any black hole within the Sun would need to have a mass smaller than that of Mercury to avoid detection through its impact on neutrino output. There's another avenue for detecting Hawking stars that isn't confined to the Sun. This involves observing their vibrations. Fueled by the immense currents of convective plasma swirling within, all stars undergo vibrations. Various types of waves traverse their interiors, giving rise to global oscillations akin to those in a musical instrument. Just as the vibrational modes of an instrument define its characteristic sound, a star's internal composition influences its distinct global oscillations. The field of astroseismology, as we've explored before, investigates how seismic waves can provide insights into stellar interiors. In the sense case, its global oscillations indicate relatively little material movement, minimal sloshing in the core and surrounding regions. Conversely, closer to the surface, there are robust plasma currents transporting heat outward. The concept of a Hawking star that outwardly resembles the Sun, but possesses an internally active region deep within the core. In this scenario, seismic waves traveling through this dynamic core region would demonstrate different characteristics, altering the harmonics sustained by the star, similar to how a drum sound changes with variations in the drum skin. Current studies in astroseismology focused on the Sun have not uncovered unexpected convection regions in its interior. 
but the limitations in probing the deepest core regions prevent the detection of a black hole impact roughly a millionth the mass of the Sun based on existing observations. However, the true potential of astro-seismology lies in its ability to potentially identify Hawking stars dispersed throughout the galaxy. While the likelihood of the Sun harboring a black hole is minimal, the exploration suggests that if primordial black holes exist within a specific mass range, there's a plausible chance that some stars in the Milky Way have captured them, entering the bloated phase of a Hawking star's life and exhibiting distinctive vibrational patterns discernible from visually similar stars. While candidates for such stars haven't been identified yet, the data potentially containing these signals already exists in the latest release by ESO's Gaia satellite. The research team has committed to investigating this as soon as its astro-seismology analysis is released. Whether or not they discover Hawking stars, the endeavor promises to yield valuable insights. If primordial black holes exist, some should inevitably find their way into stars. Therefore, if Hawking stars remain undetected, it establishes another constraint on the possible abundance of primordial black holes. This exploration might help us rule out these entities as the source of dark matter. Conversely, if a detection occurs, it could offer evidence supporting their existence. The primary objective of this research is not merely concerned with the potential existence of a black hole in the sun, but rather utilizes stars as detectors to explore the presence of primordial black hole dark matter. While I am confident enough to wager my life that the sun doesn't contain a tiny black hole, acknowledging the impossibility of definitive proof, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if some stars out there shine a bit brighter than expected, undergoing an internal transformation due to the relentless influence of a growing engine of warp space-time. As we conclude our cosmic voyage with Spaceverse, we hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the mysteries of black holes, hawking stars, and the potential role of stars as detectors of primordial black hole dark matter. If you found this exploration as fascinating as we did, don't forget to like this video. Share it with fellow space enthusiasts, and subscribe to Spaceverse for more mind-expanding content. Until next time, keep looking up, and may the wonders of the universe continue to inspire you.